Hi, this is Matt, and in today's challenge problem, we'll explore a topic related to vectors in the context of a trip to Iceland. In the following question, Arthur decides to set sail for the coast of Iceland from Buda. He plots a course directly west, but the direction of the wind is blowing due south. After many harrowing adventures, Arthur completes his trip in 24 hours. Given the current wind speed for today and the fact that the total distance traveled was 1,260 kilometers, answer the following questions. We want to know what was Arthur's relative speed, what was his bearing speed, we want to express the resultant vector using the standard bases, and what assumptions were made in solving the problem. So in solving any of these problems, it's good to assess what do we know about the problem. And oftentimes it's helpful to draw a diagram. So we know we're setting sail from Buddha. So here we can depict Buddha. We'll label that here. And then the problem says that we're going due west. So here's our vector heading due west. And then the wind is blowing due south. So there's our resultant, so there's our vector for the southerly wind, and the resultant vector using a head-to-tail method of addition would get us to Iceland, and that would be our resultant vector. Now it says that we're going 1,260 kilometers, so we'll label that information there, and then we want to figure out, well, what is the current wind speed for today? So I pop over to Google, I've Googled the current wind speed today, and it's two meters per second. But all the other units that I have are in kilometers and hours. So I could use unit multipliers to figure out what this is in kilometers per hour, or I can use Google and the resources I have available to translate that. So two meters per second is the same as 7.2 kilometers per hour. So we're turning back to our diagram two meters per second is 7.2 kilometers per hour, and we're going for a total of 24 hours. So 7.2 times by 24 hours, 172.8 kilometers. So again, we can now label that distance. That 172 is the length of the vector pushing us due south. And now I want to figure out what the length of this vector is, and I can use the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle. So 172 squared plus, we'll call it B for my bearing, equals 1,260 kilometers squared. We get B isolated, take the square root to solve, and it's 1,248 kilometers. So I can go ahead and label that distance there. So now I have all the distances labeled and I have a diagram, I can return to the problems that I'm trying to solve. Well, what was Arthur's relative speed? Well, the question already sets us up with all this information. The relative speed will be the total distance traveled over the amount of time it took. So this is given in the initial problem. It's 1,260 kilometers, it took 24 hours. So the relative speed is 52.5 kilometers per hour. Now, the bearing speed is what I'm setting my speed for the due west. So my course, what I'm setting there, well, that distance we figured out was 1,248 kilometers. Again, it still took 24 hours. And so my bearing speed is 52 kilometers per hour heading due west. And if I want to express the resultant vector using the standard bases, well, I need to orient this um, this diagram somewhere within the Cartesian plane. So one option would be to say, well, let's assume that Buddha is going to be the origin. So I'll label that as zero, zero, and I have my X and my Y axes. And so that means that the point after uh, heading all due west would be negative 1,248 comma zero, and Iceland would be located at negative 1,248 comma negative 172 as the y component. So this now gives me the information to express my vector v as 
negative 1248i, and remember i again is that unit vector uh, in the x coordinate, minus 172 times j, where j is the unit vector in the y coordinate. And just for bonus kicks, I could also express this vector uh, using the notation with brackets, uh, denoting the, the vector from the origin to that point. So oftentimes it's helpful to state the assumptions that we made in solving this problem. And it helps us then think of, well, how could we incorporate other complexities into the problem? Well, one, we assume the forces were constant. So the wind speed was always two meters per second, no matter if I was in Buda or Iceland or in the middle of the sea. This is very realistic. And so when we get into concepts of calculus where the, the forces are varying, this will help us then determine this. We also assume that there were no other competing forces. So there was no friction. We didn't have wind speeds changing. We didn't have drag. There was nothing like that um, competing with the forces that we described in the diagram. And another assumption we made is that we were dealing all with straight lines. So we could use the Pythagorean theorem. We had a right triangle and we were based in the Cartesian plane, but really we're operating on the surface of the earth. So we're dealing with spherical coordinates. And so we could get into spherical geometry, but for solving this problem, we decided, well, let's make some assumptions to simplify the problem. Special thanks to our sponsors for helping produce this video.